Good evening, grave robbers, and welcome back to the television graveyard. We are your TV necromancers, Laura Prince and Noah Woolahan. We have come here tonight to examine the spirits of past television shows, to find out which ones could be resurrected, should be resurrected, and which ones should just stay doomed. This is a podcast in which we analyze the history, the hype, and the aftermath of shows that ran only one season, including some that ran only one episode, and some that still kind of hurt. With me, as always, is TV's Noah Houlihan. Get a robe, Ken! (laughs) Of course, you're going to pick a scooter quote. Of course. Uh, We are doing the 2015 Muppets that aired on ABC. The Muppets, period. Yes. (laughs) This was a very stylized, it looked... Uh, The logo looked a lot like the early logo of The Office. Yes. Not the logo that it went on to use, but just like its early promotional typewriter font looking logo. Yes. And uh, like they kind of make fun of that style throughout this. Yes. The the whole, you know, office style of sitcom that they're kind of ripping off here. (laughs) Because this is the end of... This is one of the last ones to use this format, I think. I disagree. I mean, like, Modern Family went Before off the this. air. What? I'm, I'm talking about, this is one of the last shows to start with this gimmick. Like, where this, Modern Family ran for a very long time, but Modern Family started five years before the show. Oh, okay. Superstore? Um, Superstore, I believe, started running around the same time, if not a little before. Superstore... Started running at the same season. Okay. So, uh, these are kind of these... This is like the last gasp of this mockumentary format. Huh. We really don't do this anymore, huh? Not really. I feel like this was a kind of a fad. And most of... Very few of them ever actually saw through the documentary format. The right. Office is fairly unique in that we saw the product. Yeah. Most of the time it's just like, no, that's the conceit of this show. You buy it. It's fine. Right. Because Modern Family's pilot is extremely clever in that we don't believe that they're all related until the end of the first episode. Right. It looks like they're just doing three different families to talk about what a modern family is. Right. And it turns out it's one family. Yes. Uh, But as the beginning of the episode, we've got to pour one out. Oh, yes, let's pour one out. What do you have, Laura? I have, it, it, it's still very hot here, so this is an iced drink. Uh, it is blueberry green tea with watermelon v- mint vodka. Mm-hmm. But that's none of my business. She is taking a very satisfied sip right now. It's very good. <laughs> it's very refreshing. Yeah. Uh, that, that's going to get you in trouble. Okay, okay. What the hell is that? Uh, what I did was I took mango <laughs> juice and I mixed it with blue curacao with ice and then put it in a blender. And uh, that made this beautiful green. And uh, then uh, I added some uh, Jim Bean Devil's Cut because this is a more adult grown-up Kermit. And this is Kermit tea drink. It's so green. It is very green. I think... It ain't... It's not going to be easy doing a podcast with you after you drink that green. I mean, I I think the main issue with this... I should also mention that uh, I I taped a little pink tail to it. Oh, so it can unveil the tail? So I can unveil the tail. Uh, But I think the main issue with this drink is it doesn't taste green. It doesn't taste bad, but it doesn't taste how it looks. Uh, Should I... Should I take a sip? Mm. I, d- I do not think you'll enjoy this. She did not enjoy this. Kill it with fire. So yeah, it's not the worst thing in the world, but uh, I didn't do... I didn't honor Kermit correctly with this. But it does look very Kermit green. It looks so Kermity. Mm. Oh god, it's so gross. Uh, it's not that gross. It really isn't. It's you know, just it's, not great. I just don't like bourbon. Mm-hmm. So it it does taste very bourbony. It's probably it's definitely a waste of good bourbon. <laughs> like I definitely took some very nice bourbon and then ruined it. Oh, here, try mine. I know you're not a big iced tea guy, but this I'm is not. also 
This is not black tea. It's herbal. That's very refreshing. Yeah, refreshing is exactly the perfect word for this. Like, I can kind of taste that there's booze in it, but I mostly feel quenched. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of, since it's iced tea, it's mostly water, so that'll keep me from getting sloppy. Um, And someone's got to drive this boat. Yes, so let's drive this boat right into, through the wall, bursting into the set of The Muppets. All right. Our first episode is Pig Girls Don't Cry. Yes. Now, I think it's important to mention that this is, in fact, after the movie. Yes. But we will not be seeing Walter. Which is fine. Which, yeah, I'm not not upset. Um, There's no place for Walter in this show. No. I I don't care much for Walter as a Muppet, if we're being honest. I mean, to be honest, I do think there's a place for Walter in this, actually. I think the journey of him learning what it's like to produce a Muppet show... Would be what his character is. He'd be the new guy that kind of like screwed up and like didn't quite know the flow of things. Uh, So I think there's a place for him. But I don't miss him and I don't think we need it. No, I don't. I don't. I don't miss him. (laughs) I don't super love Walter. So I I really didn't uh, care that he was gone. But they do bring in a lot of the characters that were repopularized in the 2011 Muppets film. Yes. Basically, what we're seeing is the behind the scenes of Up Late with Miss Piggy. Yes. And basically, Miss Piggy is now the star of the Muppets. She has her own talk show. And the only ones that are appearing on camera at this point are Miss Piggy as the host, Fozzie as kind of like the The Andy Richter, yeah. Yeah. And the band, The Electric Mayhem. Yeah, Dr. Teeth and The Electric Mayhem, this is the most I have ever seen them in a Muppets yeah, project. they're basically the roots. Yes. So they get to, like, kind of ha- play in with the fun and stuff like that. And they have a lot of very funny bits in this yes. show. Um, I really enjoy their part in this. And I like this conceit. Yes. Uh, Gonzo is the head writer. Yes, and he's with Rizzo and Pepe the Prawn yes. as other writers. Uh, Kermit is the producer. Yes. And Scooter is more of like a stage manager. Yeah, he's a, you know, talent coordinator and he's also gopher and he's also production assistant. Uh, Scooter is Scooter from The Muppet Show. Yeah. His job directly transmutes into this new situation. Right. Um, He's delightful in this show. Yeah, Scooter's really good in this show. He grows up a lot, but not really. A lot of the characters have grown up a lot. Uh, But he's still Scooter. Yes. Which I really like. Like, he has some grown-up issues, but he's Scooter. He's still very much Scooter. Get a robe, Ken! We'll get more into Ken in a little bit. Uh, The stage manager's actually Bobo the Bear. Bobo the Bear, yes, who... Getting more character time than ever before is Bobo the Bear. And he's pretty great. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy Bobo the Bear. And most importantly of all... Actually, no, we, we still have a couple left. Uh, Bunsen and Beaker are doing props. Swedish Chef is in charge of craft services and of any course. food props that are needed. Uh, Sam the Eagle is standards and practices. Yes. Which I really enjoy. Great idea. And he's great in that role. Yes. And then we have two receptionists. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, I forget what the, the girl mouse. Yolanda, Yolanda is Kermit's personal assistant. Yes. Uh, his personal secretary, essentially. Yes. And then, and then we have Big Mean Carl. Big Mean Carl is answering the phones, which is great. And he's a great character. And if Kermit has a personal assistant, I would assume that Piggy also has a personal assistant. Who, who, who is that? My favorite Muppet of all time, Uncle Deadly. Uncle Deadly shines I in can, this. Like, you can't see it because we're not a video podcast. There's literally a portrait of Uncle Deadly in my eyeline. Yes, we, we love Uncle Deadly here. and uh, I own two portraits of Uncle Deadly. Yeah. Uh, he's, that is the majority of merch you can find for him. Yeah, we own all the Uncle Deadly merch, all two of it. Yeah, there's an action figure I'm going to buy eventually. Um... And Rolf the dog is the barkeep. Yeah, he owns the bar next door. He doesn't actually work on the show. Right. He's kind of this like neutral figure. 
He's a uh, he's Ted Danson in Cheers. He's that kind of like friendly, kind barkeep character. Yeah, uh, and he's uh, they've always kind of had a hard time with figuring out Rolf, right? Because he was Jim Henson's signature character, which you'd think it's Kermit, but it's really Rolf. Yeah, Rolf was like his favorite to do. Mm-hmm. And when he when Jim Henson passed away, they had a really difficult time deciding how to proceed with Rolf. Right. Uh, that's why Muppet Christmas Carol, which is the first full project after Jim Henson's death. There's only a quick cameo for Rolf. Yeah, he's just playing the piano. Even though Rolf was one of the most popular Muppets at that time, because that was during the run of Muppet Babies, in yes. which Rolf had a huge role. Mm-hmm. And it, like, it's very interesting to see. This is one of the first ones where Rolf has had like another big role. Yeah, like he doesn't have a huge role in the movie in the the 2014 movie. 2011. 2011. Wow. Uh, the 2011 movie doesn't have a big role. He does He does speak, and he is there. Yes. But, like, he's not an anchor character. Correct. So, I we have to get down to, like, our... Uh, breakdown. Our breakdown. But should we talk about how this show was uh, publicized before it aired first? Sure. Uh, so, and it's very important to the plot of almost every single episode... They really publicized the breakup of Kermit and Piggy. Yes. I remember them doing press. Yes. Where they were just like... Now, speaking of Miss Piggy, you have a lot yeah. of longtime fans that are very sad. What caused this split? I know. I know. I know. It, it's... Uh, I, I know how it is. You know, there are so many, you know, sort of celebrity breakups these days. You hear about one, like, every day. And, and I'm sorry to, uh, to join in on that. Uh, you know, I, it's the kind of thing I just soon keep personal. But um, it, it's a fact. And as we go into this, people are going to know because this is the real behind the scenes for us. So we figure we better tell people ourselves. It is the strangest choice, in my opinion. Yes. That they had them break off, off, break up off camera. Right. Like, this reminds me of, remember when Barbie broke up with Ken for Blake? Oh, God, yeah. And people were like, what do you mean, Ken and Barbie broke up. It's always been Ken and Barbie. And it was just a lot of people who did not care about Barbie until this happened. It's like, yeah, that's the point. We're getting you to talk about Barbie now. It's different with the Muppets in that, like, we've seen them on screen be a couple. Yeah. And to take that away from us without explanation, really is a weird choice. I concur. I also think that there's a very uh, strange choice in that, it one, it takes a lot of the fun out of that character arc of like, they're broken up. We know they're broken up. We don't get to see them growing apart. And Kermit and Piggy have always had such a strange relationship anyway. Yeah, I mean, like, Piggy has always been, like, clingy to Kermit, and Kermit has always Jim Halpert to camera, like, ugh, this pig. Ooh. So they don't have, like, the best relationship off ca- on camera anyway. There's always this, like, weird reluctance on Kermit's part to be in the relationship with Piggy. Mm-hmm. So it's a very strange situation. Indeed. Uh, and I don't love it here. It's weird to jump in on this. So when we begin the show, like, they're broken up and we're at, like, a cast and crew, like, pre-show meeting. Yes. I think this does a really good job of establishing what this show's going to be. Like, Kermit's trying to be in control and and the Muppets are still the Muppets. And they call the order in a very Muppety way. They call yeah. the meeting to order by Bunsen electrocuting Beaker. Yes. Which gets enough attention. Is that safe? Of course. I'm wearing protective gloves. Bunsen's got a few really good lines in this. Yes. Uh, I, I do want to throw this out real quick before we like get into the, the, the meat and potatoes of the breakdown. This is on Disney+. Plus. Which means my ability to get clips is going to be a lot lower yeah. than usual. So if you hear less clips in this episode, that's why. Yeah. So uh, be aware. You're going to hear us do impressions of Muppets more in this. 
Yeah, and um, the other character that we get more characterization of from Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem is Zoot. Zoot, yes. Who's like the least well-known out of the yes. Electric Mayhem. He's the, he's the saxophone player who wears the sunglasses, and he thinks he's at an AA meeting. He is like high or in a... He is impaired through the entire time. Yes. Uh, they had an issue that the cable that was supposed to support Piggy had snapped. Yes. And Bobo was like, I don't know what happened. That was a, an industrial strength cable. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's like a lovely bit where we see like what went wrong in a previous show that we don't really need to see as an audience. No, but I think we're establishing that there will be flashbacks. There will be cutaways in this. Yes. Because that's going to be important later that there's cutaways. Yes. Uh, and then we have... Uh, Kermit explaining that there's a cameras now following them that's going to do behind the scenes on Up Late with Miss Piggy. And they're going to do like talking heads. And yeah. then, amazing. I love this. It cuts to Gonzo saying... Cut to interviews? That is just a totally overused device to make easy jokes. You know, talking to the camera about how you really feel and then cutting back and saying something completely different. I just hate that. I love it. Great device. The, to immediately put that lampshade of like, yeah, we know this is an original, but this is the Muppets doing it, so you're going to like it. I love. Yeah. It's it's a great little bit. Yes. Piggy flounces into the meeting and calls for Kermie. Mm-hmm. And everyone, like, starts to panic. And Kermit goes, Scooter. <laughs> and like dismisses Scooter who like hauls ass. I love this Kermit. I love this Kermit that is like still in the the situation where he has to appease Piggy, but not because he wants to anymore, because yeah. he has to. And she uh she puts a bunch of bizarre requests in front of him. Uh, she wants generic trash to be thrown over her personal trash so that people don't know what she's throwing away. Right. Uh, the lilacs in her dressing room don't smell strongly enough. Mm-hmm. Memo to self. Talk to God about lilacs. <laughs> He's also much snarkier than most of the Kermits we know. And what I think is particularly interesting about this version of Piggy is Piggy is now the person she always pretended to be in The Muppets. Yeah. Because she was always like, the star is here in, like, The Muppet Show and in other Muppet properties. Now, she is the star. She has her own late night talk show. She's big news. Yes. So to actually see her with that power and her ego matching her reputation is a perfect growth for Piggy. And, like, we established she's popular. She has fans. She's... It's not... She's not an underdog right now. Yeah. Like, the show is popular. The show is successful. Mm Mm-hmm. So, uh, there's a weird moment where Kermit calls Piggy sexy. And that is momentarily jarring. (laughs) And it's one of those moments where... uh, I feel like it's not much of a spoiler to say that we enjoyed a lot of aspects of this show. Mm Mm-hmm. But I could see where, if you think of... The Muppets is being a children's media. It's very off-putting. Which is true, but also, like, always has been wrong. Yes. Like, I I think a lot of people who are watching The Muppets, period, here, uh, grew up watching The Muppet Show on Nick Jr., where it aired in syndication. And when it aired in syndication on Nick Jr., they only could show, like, nine episodes. Right. Because it's Muppet sex and violence, people. Yeah, like, the original. the Muppets are. The original pilot was, in fact, called Muppet Sex and Violence. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we have this moment where he also announces, my life is a bacon-wrapped hell on earth. And then Sam the Eagle pops out of nowhere and goes, can't say hell. Can't say hell. <laughs> and it's great. Yes. So, uh, the other thing that she is upset about is that Elizabeth Banks is supposed to be the guest. Yes. On that evening show. And she hates Elizabeth Banks. Yes, but we're not sure why. Well, Kermit believes it's because of 
an audition that went poorly. Yes. Last time she was on the show, she showed uh, Piggy's audition for, I think, Hunger Games? Yes. And Elizabeth Banks had already been cast as Effie Trinket. Mm -hmm. And uh, Miss Piggy was auditioning for Katniss and had not read the book or was not familiar with anything. Just kept yelling, I'm hungry. (laughs) Yes. Uh, And the B plot in this episode is Fozzie has a human girlfriend. Oh my God. And her parents are racist toward bears. Yes. The the wordplay throughout all of this. Let's just knock out Fozzie's like story here. Okay. Because one, it's Ricky Lindholm. As the the girlfriend. From Garfunkel and Oates and Another Period and a lot of other things. Yeah. So it's just great to see her. And it starts with Fozzie in a car. And he says something like... And your online profile says passionate bear looking for love. You get a lot of wrong responses. If not wrong, it just wrong for me. Which is such a good, quick... Oh, such a good joke. And it's that perfect joke of like... If you're watching it with kids, they have no idea what just why that was so funny. Yep. Like, that is the perfect, like, shot over your head Shrek type joke. And, like, I remember that joke being the moment I was like, I'm sold on this show. Because we watched this one live. Yes, and, we did. Because this is, I think, the last time I remember a show being on TV and thinking, we need to watch and support this. Or else this will only get one season. Like, I remember being invested in the growth of this show. Yeah, and being like, it, this show was very controversial. A lot of people hated this show when it came out. Yeah. Because I think they had that, the Muppets are for children. Yeah. Wrong. Uh, the Muppets is a really interesting IP for this reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, because everyone kind of has their own idea of what the Muppets are. Yes. And the Muppets were always meant to be all ages, if you, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Defunct Land does... An incredible multi-part documentary on Jim Henson. Oh, yeah. Uh, after this episode, watch all of it and then yeah. cry. And then you'll cry, yes. Because <laughs> the last episode, I'm just sobbing hysterically. You looked over like, Are you good? And I'm just like, <laughs> uh, So he meets the parents. The parents are, in fact, like totally racist. Yes. And like <laughs> the idea of bear stereotypes is so funny because the dad says something like, what if you have kids? What are they going to do? Where are they going to go to the bathroom? The woods? And Fozzie goes, that's a stereotype. So they're playing off the phrase, does a bear shit in the woods? Yeah. But again, it's over your head if you don't know that. Like, this to me is so perfectly executed. But like a little kid might understand Fozzie's a bear, animals go outside to go to the bathroom. Right. So like a little kid would think they got that joke. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Which... It's um, Shakespearean on that idea that it works on multiple levels. Yes, it, it, this is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Scooter is Scooter is trying to keep Elizabeth Banks away from Miss Piggy. Oh my god, this is my favorite scene. The, like, it, there's so much more show, but this is my favorite scene because Scooter takes. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh all through this. <laughs> it's a really good Sco- scene. Scooter is taking Elizabeth Banks around. The TV lot. And he's like, so have you ever been on a lot before? And Elizabeth Banks is like, yes, I'm an actress. And He's trying to keep her away from the studio. Yeah, he's just trying to distract her. And they end up fighting. Yes. And they're fighting over the wheel. And Elizabeth Banks throws him out of the golf cart. And you see him just kind of like land and scream. He like tuck and rolls. Well, what's amazing is... I know that what really just happened was a doll was thrown. Yeah, Elizabeth Banks may have yeeted a doll. A Scooter doll. But the way Scooter lands, like, one leg is twisted and his mouth is open. And, like, he makes the appropriate noise. It's like, gah! Hilarious. Then you hear, as Elizabeth is driving back... You hear, like, footsteps. And then Scooter jumps on her back and just screams, I'm back! Yes. Oh, I was losing it. <laughs> yeah, like, it's it's a really great physical comedy. It, oh, I, I laughed so hard at this. 
I was so sold on this show. <laughs> and the musical guest is Imagine Dragons. So we see them like intercut doing a song during the whole like last five minutes of the episode. Mm-hmm. And they they kind of try to poach Animal. Yeah. Where they're like, if you ever, you know, if you ever want to tour with us, man, like you're always welcome. Too many women, too many towns. And then he gets that, like, long stare. He gets that, like, thousand-yard stare that's great. Oh, my God. Everything about this. This is a perfect pilot, in my opinion. And Elizabeth Banks bursts in the door and goes, whatever your talent coordinator tells you, he hit me first. (laughs) Which is a great, like... (laughs) And she's, like, roughed up. Like, she got into a fight with Scooter. There's something, like... The the relationship of guest stars with the Muppets is it always works. Yes. Like I've never seen them get the guest star that doesn't buy in. I I think because uh not to sound snotty, but you're never gonna outrank the Muppets. There's not gonna be a situation where like they need you specifically. <laughs> That's true. If you're not willing to play ball, there's a line of people who are desperate to work with the Muppets. But, like, I, I think of the... Sesame Street has a wait list. Right. Like, that's why you never see a lot of flash-in-the-pan, like, blink-and-you-miss-it celebrities on Sesame Street. You don't see a lot of one-hit wonders because you have to be huge for a fairly long time to get the gig. Because, like, I think of... And I'm, I'm also bringing this up so I have a clip I can play. If I think of, like, the biggest most sarcastic asshole that you would think would not play nice with the Muppets, it would be Ricky Gervais. And there is a fantastic video of Ricky Gervais having an argument with Elmo. Mm -hmm. But he's having it with Elmo. Like he, he still, he doesn't like do the thing where it's like, you're a sock that someone's holding. He doesn't do that. He has this like, very sarcastic argument with Elmo. And, like, at one point, Elmo looks into the camera and goes, Oh, you got me in trouble. Hey, it wasn't Elmo's fault. Just... You were doing it. Well, just, just be nice. Don't, no talk Elmo about... Elmo was trying listen, to sway listen. you back. Okay, no, these, the, these are the no-go areas. Drugs. Child <laughs> abuse. The Holocaust. Okay? okay. We're let's not talking about just, Let's stay off those three things. Okay. That's because that's your stand-up, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, do you know what necrophilia is? <laughs> <laughs> Elmo wants this tape. <laughs> so do I because everything's so far off the rails but I think the puppeteers of the Muppets are just so good that they just pull you into the, your world and you're just there with them yeah and like Ricky Gervais is still buying in mm-hmm. he's playing himself in an exaggerated form but you really aren't going to get them working with someone who just refuses. Yeah. Like, I keep thinking of the episode of WWE Raw that the Muppets were on. Yeah. And how there's this, like, very memorable incident with the wrestler Sheamus. Mm-hmm. With Beaker. And they both have, like, stand-up red hair. And Sheamus greets Beaker warmly and says, I missed you at the family reunion this year. <laughs> yes. Like, this is so very... Good. And I genuinely think it's because the Muppets is an IP that everyone, everyone currently famous grew up with the Muppets. Yeah. The Muppets has been around for a really long time. So if you're going to work with the Muppets, you're going to go, you want to work with the Muppets. Yeah. Because they do have a lot of, I I would say, low A-list, high B-list talent Mm -hmm. on this show. And these are all people that wanted to work with the Muppets. It's very, very clear. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to talk a little bit about another guest star who actually had a documented history of working with the Muppets before this. Yes. So uh, it turns out Hunger Games has nothing to do with Miss Piggy disliking yeah. Elizabeth Banks. Mm-hmm. Kermit and Piggy had gone to go see Pitch Perfect 2. And outside the theater, uh, Piggy kept stopping to speak to fans. Yeah. And take pictures and be Miss Piggy. And Kermit kind of snaps. Yeah. Can't you just be my girlfriend? Yeah. Why do you always have to be Miss Piggy? And they're upset. And Miss Piggy goes, what, do you want to break up over this? And Kermit says, I think we just did. Yeah. Over this? Over everything. And Kermit leaves her outside the theater crying. Yeah. And this is the only, this is the one gripe I have with this pilot is... 
And this is why they had to establish flashbacks. Because there's no reason for there to be a camera there to capture this. Yeah. And it is still shot documentary form. Like, there are people walk in front of the camera and stuff like it's that. It's like, uh, the thing I can best compare it to is Jim and Pam's proposal mm-hmm. in the office. Where the, like, it's a significant distance. Yeah. Like, it almost feels like a paparazzi shot. We don't hear a lot of what is said. We only hear that part. Mm-hmm. So, like, that part I felt a little bit weird. Maybe it's because it's them breaking up and I'm like, ah, oh, the Muppets. But, uh, yeah, we do see them break up here. Yeah. And that's the first episode. Yes. Oh, uh, the other thing that we didn't really get through, uh, because it wasn't important to the plot at all, was Denise. But we do need to discuss Denise. We do need to discuss Because she's going to be in more. Yeah. We established that Kermit is already seeing another pig named Mm -hmm. Denise. Denise is younger. Yes. She's Southern. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And she works in the marketing department. Yes. She does also, like, work there. Like, once again, Kermit is kind of in charge of her. No. She works for the network. She doesn't okay. work for Up Late with Miss Piggy. He met her at like a network event. Right. I'm sorry. I got confused. So they work in the same physical building, but they do not work together. Gotcha. She is not omnipresent. She shows up to visit him from time to time. Yes. But like, it's like publishing. Like, the editorial staff is in a different building, sometimes in a different state mm-hmm. than like the accounting staff. So there's a line I think we need to discuss, though. Yes. Because Kermit says, uh, after, like, establishing who Denise is, Mm -hmm. he just kind of shrugs and says, what can I say? I like pigs. And there's something gross about this. He says, like, I have a type. I like pigs. And it's weird. Yeah, I don't know why it's upsetting that he says that. Like, there's nothing wrong with having a type. Yeah, I mean... Far be it from me. But, like, something about this feels like... Like, the, I, I think it's intentional because it creates that feeling of, like, oh, he traded in Piggy for a younger model. But we do see that, like, the relationship with Piggy wasn't working out. Mm-hmm. And Denise, while working in entertainment, works in a backstage role. Right. So she doesn't work... Um, He's not fishing off the company pier in the same way. Right. Uh, because that's a very classic, uh, I believe the crass way to put it is don't shit where you eat. Yes. Um, but he's no longer dating a coworker. She's mm-hmm. just close enough that they can justify her being at his job. Yes. When they want to, but she's not part of it. Because yes. another thing that happened in the last episode was that Fozzie brings uh, his girlfriend and her family. Yes. To kind of show off. To the set and wants to introduce them to Piggy and it doesn't work out because Piggy's upset about Elizabeth Elizabeth Banks. Yes. So Denise basically has no character traits other than being younger and Southern. Yes. So we can't really describe her to you. Yeah. She is in fact there. Yeah. And that's really all we know about her right now is that like Kermit's already seeing someone new. Yes. We'll talk more about this. When uh, we hit her more. Yes. Episode Episode two. two. It's Sweetums' birthday. Yeah, Sweetums is there. I don't know what his job is, but he is there. Uh, He's like tech effects. Yes. Yeah, he's lights and stuff. He's... I love Sweetums. Uh, One of my favorite things in Disney World is going to see Muppet Vision 3D. Yeah. And then watching Sweetums come out. And then children cry. Yeah, Sweetums is a scary dude. Because every time kids are like, ah, because he's a little terrifying. Because yes. it's a guy in a Sweetums suit running down the aisle mm-hmm. in what otherwise has been a fairly static show. So they're signing the card for Sweetums. And then Zoot draws something and someone yells at him and he goes, maybe I can make it a saxophone. Yeah, because great Zoot, joke. Zoot has drawn a penis. Yes. Um... Floyd Pepper doesn't like birthdays. He thinks birthdays are invented by the man. Yeah. That's another member of Electric Mayhem, in case you're wondering. Yeah, he's the one with the red hair. Uh, And Fozzie is super excited. Jay Leno has invited him to a party. Yes. And uh, they get Jay Leno. Jay Leno is there. Yeah, and... uh, Scooter's upset and worried, and then Kermit's like, it's okay, it's not that bad. And Scooter's like... 
Peggy's in a really bad mood today. Everything's going to be terrible. And Kermit's like, it's going to be fine. And then Deadly comes in, just says, code red. And the building explodes. Everyone panics. And I love this shot. There's then a shot of Kermit, Deadly, and Scooter hiding under the desk. While you see, like, part of Miss Piggy running around throwing things. But, like, her head's cut off by the shot. Yes. What? It's an amazing shot. I love this shot. And, like, it's interesting to see Muppets at floor level. Yes. Because you never see the floor in the Muppets. No, you don't. You're right. So, like, I really appreciate this shot. And uh, Kermit explains all the codes... And that, like, Code Red is the worst. Yeah. And they say something about, like, well, did she find out what her weight was? And Uncle Deadly kind of scoffs. Uncle Deadly's like, I have woven such a cocoon of lies. She has no idea her size, her age. Yeah. How much she weighs. And, like, Deadly is so awesome. Yeah, I love Deadly. And so they talk about uh, Piggy desperately needs a boyfriend. Yes. And Kermit's like, well, she used to be my girlfriend, so I know all her celebrity passes. And then Kermit turns out to be Leah Thompson. Yes. From Back to the Future. From Howard the Duck. That's true. It's so she has, a demonst- she has a demonstrated predilection for doing it with puppets. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I don't know if it's just, I don't think they were thinking that hard into the joke. Yeah. But I was just like, oh no. Yeah, it's still a great joke. Um, To the point where they're screaming, like, throw everything we've got at Keanu Reeves. <laughs> who they must not have been able to get because he would have been amazing. Yeah. And a couple years later, Keanu Reeves essentially plays this role in Always Be My Maybe on Netflix. Yeah, that's weird. Where he plays like a romantic false lead. Oh, that movie would have been better with Muppets. Oh, every movie would have been better with Muppets. <laughs> Because that's a meme that goes around every time, from time to time. Like, re- uh, you can keep one person and recast the rest of the cast as Muppets. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking for the right answer, it's Clue. Keep Tim Curry. Everyone else is a Muppet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have a real hard time arguing that one. I mean, Kermit's Mr. Green. Other than the fact that we already have a movie where it you keep Tim Curry and everybody's Muppets. And it's great. It is great, but I feel like someone else should get a turn. I don't. All right, then. (laughs) So uh, the B plot here is uh, about Girl Scout cookies. (laughs) Bobo is selling Girl Scout cookies and nobody has time to buy these Girl Scout cookies. He's selling them on behalf of his his young daughter. Yeah. And this should have been the line I used to open uh, (laughs) the show with. Kermit's like, not right now. And Bobo's like, all right, I'll just take the battery out of your car to remind you to come talk to me. Which is such a great, like, throwaway line. Yeah, he's he's great in this episode. Oh, yeah. So then, through their plotting, they get Josh Groban on the show. Yes. And they are scheming. Yes. They want Josh Groban, Josh Groban to fall in love with Miss Piggy. Mm-hmm. So they have them sing a duet of If I Loved You from Carousel. Mm-hmm. Which is uh, a really good song from a show I hate so much. Yeah, Carousel's bad. I hate Carousel more than I hate, like, almost anything else on the planet. And it works. Yes. Because Kermit, like, has snowfall in the background. It's an elaborate set piece. And they kiss at the end of it. Yes. And even Statler is like, woo! (laughs) Yeah. And Waldorf looks at him and he goes, I'm allowed to cheer things. Yeah. Uh, because Natler and Waldorf are in this. Yeah, they're in the, the live audience. Yeah, which is perfect. Which where they belong. And then we find out that the Muppet Newsman <laughs> has appeared. And he is also selling cookies to the Muppets more successfully. Yeah. Um, and Bobo's upset because, like, Big Mean Carl has bought cookies from the Muppet Newsman. And he, mm. like, kind of scares the Muppet Newsman off. Yes. And uh, then Piggy has shown up to work. In a delightful mood. In Code Blue. There's never been a Code There's Blue. There's never been a Code Blue. Everything is great. And uh, Swedish Chef goes, Oh, groping to groping. <laughs> and Piggy goes, oh, Dirty mind, but accurate. <laughs> and I'm just like, Oh no, these are, No, 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 no. I love it. And then like, she advances on Beaker, who like, almost visibly poops himself. And then she goes, You look nice. And Beaker's like, It's this, like, great moment where she 
kind of comes in and she's happy and no one knows what to do. Yes. And she's talking about the ideas Josh Groban has for the show. He wants yeah. to make it smarter and more sophisticated. Mm-hmm. She wants to talk to an author. Uh, Kermit then reminds her she has to read the book. Yeah. She wants the band to go acoustic. She wants a tranquil vibe. Like a warm glass of milk at night. <laughs> They're called the electric mayhem. <laughs> And there's a great bit where they show the band trying to practice acoustic. And Kermit goes, that's a good song. What is it? Dead Inside. I wrote it today. (laughs) So it's a really good bit. And then uh, we do have the B-plot with Fozzie. Because Fozzie's been the B-plot. Yeah. Um, He goes to the party and... Steals a candy bowl. He steals a candy bowl from Jay Leno. Because he wants a souvenir of the night. And then he's immediately racked with guilt. Yes. Uh, and Jay Leno invites him back over. And he, like, can't handle it. So he's like, I'm going to return it before he can possibly know. And then he accidentally breaks it. And uh, it turns out Jay Leno's not upset. He just wants him to go on tour with him. Because Jay Leno's called him back to the house, and, yeah. and Fozzie thinks it's about the candy bowl. Mm-hmm. So he's going to bring the candy bowl and return it. Yeah, but he accidentally breaks it, and Jay Leno's not upset. So to celebrate, Fozzie Wait, tries what? to steal again. Yeah, Fozzie tries to steal something, and then Jay Leno catches him stealing the second time and commiserates and says, I stole a candy bowl from George Carlin once. Here, yeah, let me show it to you. And it's the candy bowl Fozzie has stolen and broken. Yeah. And that's when Jay Leno loses his shit. Yeah. He gets him and throws him out of the house. And uh, the show is not successful with Josh Groban. Yes. At the helm. And uh, there's a great moment where Scooter and Animal bond over a pre-show cry. Yeah. Which I I love Scooter in this show. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, there's this like really great moment. Where Bobo is down and out. Like, the big Muppet newsman keeps showing up and selling to everybody. And Scooter goes, why don't you why don't you sell cookies to the band? They love cookies. Yeah. And Bobo goes, yeah, they're, they're always happy. Yeah. Legally now. Great joke. Amazing joke. And it works. They buy Bobo out. Mm-hmm. We forgot a really good Bobo line. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Bobo talks about how... Him failing to sell cookies is going to be a great lesson to his daughter uh, to never count on her father for anything. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, oh, it's just like this, whoa, okay. Um, so Kermit has figured out how to get rid of Groban. Yes. He takes Piggy outside and he's like, Piggy, you're right. You, you know what? Groban has great ideas. And you're amazing because you're the only woman in late night. And you have the strength. To say, you still need a man. And the billboard says, Josh Groban presents Up Late with Miss Piggy. Mm-hmm. And Piggy's like stunned. She's speechless. Josh Groban's smiling. And Kermit just looks at Josh and goes, bye bye. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> oh, I love this Kermit. It's, he's like a little evil. Uh, th- there's a moment I want to talk about that either happened in this episode or the last one where they're doing a talking head with Big Mean Carl. Yeah. And it gets interrupted by the plot. Yes. Like they're filming him and he's talking and then Kermit goes, walks by to talk to Piggy and the camera follows him instead. And you hear Big Mean Carl being like, hey! But playing with the genre that way of like, let's follow the more important character is yes. great. Uh, and there's a nice little cutaway at the end with uh, Leah Thompson, where she's in an elevator with Kermit. Yes. And he, they smile at one another and, like, almost start to flirt. And then Gonzo gets in the elevator. Yeah, and ruins it. Uh, this is not Josh Groban's first time with the Muppets, either. He sang Pure Imagination? With- yes, with him. Uh, it was him and Lindsay Sterling. Yes. Did a duet of Pure Imagination, and the Muppets are in the music video. Yes. And Piggy ruins it. Yeah. So they have history. Yeah. It's lovely um, to see him back. But Josh Groban clearly, like, no... Josh Groban is famously just game. Yeah. With playing with his own image. Yes. He should have a John Mayer has a TV show TV show. Yes. I would watch it. (laughs) Even not for this show. Episode three. Fozzie is trying to write sketches for the show. And they're bad. Yes. 
And Kermit's way of dealing with this, because he doesn't want to hurt his best friend's feelings, is to say that they're too good, he should write movies. And Fozzie agrees and quits the show. Yes. Um, And Kermit uh, offends me personally in this episode. Mm -hmm. Because when they're drinking at Rolf's, uh, Kermit makes fun of pumpkin spice beer. He does. And I hate him. Yeah. So it's a stay doomed. We also meet Chip from IT. This is where we meet my boy Chip from IT. I hate Chip from IT. I love Chip from IT. He's terrible. He's a humanoid Muppet. Yeah. Which there's not a lot of. And he's awkward. He's got a big overbite. And he can blink. Yeah, he's so creepy. But when he blinks, his eyes don't close. His pupils just vanish. Yeah, it's just like, it just goes completely white. But the way they introduce you to him is someone just, like, is talking to him and goes, Wait, who are you? Who are you? I'm Chip. I'm the IT guy. I'm Chip. I'm the IT guy. I think he's funny. I think he's not great. Um, He's not necessary to any of this. We have Mm. enough good Muppets. (laughs) And so, uh... Christina Applegate has shown an embarrassing video of Piggy on the show. Yes. So Piggy is uh, declaring war on Christina Applegate. They also now have to find a replacement for Fozzie. So they find Nick Offerman. Yeah, which is cool to see him. Uh, And he's really funny. He, like, demands a cappuccino machine. Yes. Like, for some reason, he just, he needs a... (laughs) Well, Kermit goes, thanks for being here, Nick. I owe you one. And he goes, I'll take a cappuccino machine. So, uh, oh, I mean, all right. <laughs> you said you owed me one, and I'm I'm cashing that in for cappuccino machines. Yeah, it's one of the nice ones that would be in a restaurant with an Italian man. <laughs> uh, it's very funny, and there's this. Uh, the B plot here is that Gonzo has uh, has catfished a lady with images of Liam Hemsworth. <laughs> um. And, uh, of course, they get Liam Hemsworth. Yes. Who is lovelorn and sad because he's less... We see a lot of... like it's, This is kind of a predecessor to how they do The Good Place. Yeah. With Tahani, with the even less famous Hemsworth brother. Right, right. But the other one wasn't even in the picture yet as far as like the public eye. So this is just Liam being mm-hmm. less attractive than Chris Hemsworth. And yes. being lovelorn and sad. But still being unbelievably handsome. Yeah, I mean, he's still Liam Hemsworth. Like, he's not, you know, he's not unattractive, but he's lovelorn. Mm-hmm. And part of the problem is that he's an actor and doesn't know when people like him for him. And so Liam agrees to go with Gonzo to meet Debbie, the young lady that Gonzo has catfished, and ask him, ask her... Would she still be into him if he didn't look like Liam Hemsworth? And she says what you say in that situation, which is like, yeah, of course I would be. Mm -hmm. Because in her mind, he he is Liam Hemsworth. So Mm -hmm. because he goes, I lied to you. My name isn't Gonzo. I am Liam Hemsworth, a famous actor. Yes. And he steals the girl from Gonzo. (laughs) And she says, like, of course I I would still be with you. And he's like, do you want to get some dinner? Get out of here. (laughs) And so he takes the girl... And Debbie gets a happy ending out of this. Yeah, and that's like, just over. <laughs> yeah, she, he, neither of them ever come back. We can assume that they lived a long and happy life together. Oh, but this is uh, establishing that Gonzo is, is no longer with Camilla. Camilla, the chicken. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's... Because uh, we have no status quo. <laughs> and so Fozzie... Is going into the woods to try to, like, reconnect with nature. Yes. Fozzie's a bear in the woods. Yeah, he tries to get some food that someone tied up in a tree. Well, he can't find, like, a convenience store. Because he's a, he's not a wild bear. Right. And someone has tied their picnic basket to a tree limb, like you're supposed to, <laughs> to avoid bears. And he gets trank gunned. Yes. And then Kermit has to go pick him up. Yeah. Um... And Fozzie thinks he's dead. Mm-hmm. And 
He goes, I'm in heaven. And then Kermit, he's like, you're here too? After the way you treated me, I didn't think you'd make it up here. <laughs> Which is a good line. A good and then they line. have to haul like this high fozzy back to the studio. Mm-hmm. And then we see uh, Miss Piggy's super lame attempt at revenge on Christina Applegate is that she has to... Uh, Scooter is going to take a cake to her front door and smash it in her face. Yeah. And so Scooter arrives at her door with the cake and is like, this is an apology cake from uh, Piggy. And Christina Applegate's like, look, you're really sweet and I don't want you to get in trouble. So she dunks her face into the cake. Mm -hmm. And then the police come to arrest Piggy. Yeah. Because she's filming outside someone else's home. And Christina looks at Scooter and goes, you're really sweet. You want to come in for coffee? And Scooter goes and has coffee with Christina Applegate. (laughs) And uh, Piggy gets arrested, yelling for Scooter to help her. And then the episode ends. Yes. (laughs) So, uh, episode four. Mm Because there's 16 episodes of the show. We gotta go. We gotta move, yeah. Uh, Sam has a crush on Janice. And uh, Janice, anytime she even remotely interacts with Sam, it's like, Sam changes Sam's whole day. Yes, I... Love this relationship. I do too. I don't know why. Oh, because it's so transparently that Sam is in love with the idea of Janice. Yeah. Because the relationship would never, ever work. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's really interesting to see this unrequited crush based entirely on Sam thinking he knows Janice and he does not. Mm -hmm. Uh, The A plot of this is that uh, Statler and Waldorf are heckling and Fozzie accidentally shoots Statler point blank range with a t-shirt gun. <laughs> yes. And Piggy has been feeling left out and sad because she's very, very lonely. Mm-hmm. So she decides to invite the crew out. No. The, uh, she's upset that the crew never invites her out. Right. So Kermit's like, listen, guys, I need you to invite Piggy out. She'll say no. You just need to invite her. Right, because Pepe invites her, and at first she says no, and then she's like, you know what, no, I'll come. Yeah. And they're all like, oh, oh no. no. Uh, but then they go out to do karaoke, and Ed Helms is there, and we become so jealous. I'm bitterly jealous of Ed Helms. Of Ed Helms, because like for five minutes, it's just Muppets doing karaoke. With Ed Helms. With Ed Helms. And it's great. And they're drinking and carousing. And there's a great line in this episode. Tonight, my PhD stands for pretty hard drinking. (laughs) Really, Bunsen? No, it's a signal of my advanced academic status. (laughs) Great. So good. But like, we see Ed, Scooter, Bobo, and Miss Piggy singing Spice Girls. They sing Love Shack. Swedish Chef sings Rapper's Delight. (laughs) Um, Which I want to point out. I can't play any of this because it's all copyrighted music. So enjoys this. I was gonna say that might be the only part you could play. <laughs> um, and then there is a moment where uh, Janice sings "Stay" by Lisa Loeb. Yeah. And Sam's jaw drops open, and Deadly just kind of closes it for him. Yeah. And then Sam. Awkwardly sings Hero by Mariah Carey, and it's perfect because he's swaying. Like, he's awkwardly shifting his weight from foot to foot because he doesn't know what to do he's with got himself. He's bad posture, and he's gripping the mic with both hands. Like, it's a perfect guy who can't do karaoke pose. And Jan- As a guy who can't do karaoke. And heartbreakingly, Janice is on her phone, and then Ed Helms comes over brings her a drink, and they giggle, and he sits with her. Mm-hmm. And you just see Sam's heart break. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> and, uh, of course, there's a great line where Ed Helms, at, while Journey is playing, interrupts Miss Piggy talking to someone and goes, um, excuse me, I don't know where you stand on believing, but don't stop believing. It's, uh, it's one of the greatest scenes of this whole show. When this show hits, it hits. Mm-hmm. Uh, this whole sequence... There's not a lot to this episode, if we're going to be totally honest. No, um, but I love... This is my favorite episode. <laughs> because the uh, with the actual, like, plot plot, it's... 
Fozzie brings Statler a bunch of things he asks for, and Fozzie's like Statler's errand boy. And then Statler just has an empty bed with the word sucker written on it. Before that, there's like a very emotional scene where he, because he feels bad he hurt him. Yeah. And which one's injured? Is it Statler? Statler. Yeah, he, he comes into Statler and he's like tries to make him feel better, but Statler like razzes him. And then as he's leaving, he's like, you're the only person to come to see me. And Fozzie's like, Woldar didn't even come? And he goes, no. So, like, they have this what appears to be very genuine moment. Yeah. That they just take away with when he leaves a sign that says sucker. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> yep. And it, so that, like, that's the whole plot. Yeah. So we get to the next morning and uh, we see Yolanda. And Yolanda is hung over AF. <laughs> As is everyone. Well, we only see Yolanda at first. Mm-hmm. And Kermit comes in, you know, clean and bright, because he wasn't there the previous night. He goes, did you sleep here? Is it morning? Yes. Then yes. <laughs> and. You do a really good Yolanda. <laughs> thank you. It's just like six packs of cigarettes a, a day, plus Audrey from Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> um, I was going to say Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah. It is also Janine from Ghostbusters, yeah. which makes more sense than <laughs> conflating a bunch of stuff the way I did. <laughs> Uh, Kermit's super annoyed. Uh, there's a great Janice Sam sequence where Sam goes, I'm happy to see you made it home last night. And Janice is like, how did you know? <laughs> and he was like, "I, because you're here. You must have made it home safely. I, No one followed you home. <laughs> and Scooter doesn't have his glasses on. Horrifying. The, <laughs> the shot of Scooter with no glasses is a horrifying visual. Oh, but the line is amazing. Where he says, I lost them during Maniac, and then I stepped on them 400 times. <laughs> Wait, that is a perfect joke. Yeah. <laughs> so like, like, you don't have to see it, but you know exactly what happened. Yeah. So good. Uh, and Bunsen and Beaker are wearing each other's clothes, and when they're called out on it, they're like, what we do on our personal time is no one's business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is, like, I feel like it's been a joke for a while that they're a couple. But this is the only time where it's like, oh, they're definitely a couple. Yeah. <laughs> and they're into some stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, like, Piggy arrives and everybody makes fun of Kermit for being a stick in the mud. Yeah. Because Piggy's also told everyone they can come in late. Yes. So he, she's, like, actively damaging the show. Mm-hmm. So Kermit then uses his Kermit Jedi mind tricks on Piggy to convince... Her, she's too special to hang out with them all the time mm-hmm. uh, because they were going to go out again with right. Usher. Right. Uh, and then they don't because of that. Yeah. Episode five. Uh, so this is Reese Witherspoon and Miss Piggy. Yes. going to run through a couple of these a little more quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miss Piggy and Reese Witherspoon don't get along because... Uh, Miss Piggy is petty AF. Mm-hmm. And whenever there's a female character, uh, she doesn't get along with them. Yes. And so she kind of tries to be better than Reese Witherspoon. Mm-hmm. And Reese Witherspoon's like, oh, well, I do a lot of charity work. Because Reese Witherspoon won the Oscar for Walk the Line and Piggy wanted that role. Yeah, that's a- <laughs> which is a fun thing to think about. And Miss Piggy in Walk the Line. Yeah. <laughs> with Joaquin Phoenix. And uh, she says, Reese Witherspoon talks about her charity work. She's like, I don't want to talk about my Oscar. I want to talk about my charity work. I work with Habitat for Humanity. And Miss Piggy, not wanting to be uh, upstaged in any way, mm-hmm. also volunteers for Habitat for Humanity. Yeah. But shows up in like stiletto work boots and like clearly thinks it's a photo op. Yeah, thinks the press is going to be there, but they're not. She... Clearly thinks that she's going to be there, take a picture, and then go home. Mm-hmm. And really, when a celebrity does Habitat for Humanity, they have to actually do stuff. Right. And uh, they kind of have this problem where Piggy then looks terrible. Yeah. Because Piggy, like, accidentally knocks down the Habitat for Humanity house. Well, yeah, and it's right after she calls the press anonymously and is like, Miss Piggy is being so helpful. So the press show up just in time to watch her destroy the house that they're building. Yes. So there's that plot. And then we also have the plot of 
Uh, Fozzie is telling jokes about his girlfriend on stage, Becky, mm-hmm. who's Ricky Lindholm. It's still the same girlfriend. Yeah. And he tells a lot of very unflattering jokes about her. And she gets upset. Yes. And so she kind of t- convinces him not to tell these jokes about her. But then his jokes suck. Yes. So she lets him tell the jokes about her. Yeah. That's it. That's that plot. Now, as a comedian, uh, the jokes that he tells about his girlfriend are not actually that good. No, and they they just exist to be unflattering and embarrassing. Because, like, the, the truth of the matter is, if you're watching the show, you can think that they're kind of funny because you have a relationship with the girlfriend. Mm-hmm. If you actually went to a comedy club and the comic was saying, my girlfriend is so sweaty, like, you don't know this woman. So there's nothing for you to relate to here. Like, you can do relationship material. But it's got to be universal. Right. Like, if I were to go on stage and say, like, oh, man, my girlfriend's always cold. Having a partner who's always cold is a relatable one. Yes. Like, that's a very often problem that people can, like, relate to and laugh about. Can, can you relate to that? Is your I, partner, I can, like, always cold? I can relate to that. Um, but he, he starts writing jokes about how big her feet are. Yeah. And it's like, not every person is in a relationship with someone that has big feet, like... These jokes would not actually land. Right. Uh, but they do in the show. Yes. Comedy theory. Just a little comedy theory for you. That's why I'm here. It's what I get to talk about. Next episode! Well, no, no we're not, no. In an, epi- in an effort to apologize to Reese Witherspoon, Miss Piggy has her back on the show. Right. So before Miss Piggy can apologize, Reese Witherspoon scoops her and says, like, I acted really unprofessionally. Piggy, I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. And the audience eats it up. Because Reese Witherspoon has humbled herself. Miss Piggy does a three-minute I'm sorry extravaganza. Mm-hmm. To upstage Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, there, there are dancers. There's confetti. There's a rap. Like... Yeah, so they, she doesn't actually really learn anything. No, certainly um, not. And apparently the feud with Reese Witherspoon was alluded to in the promotional materials. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, so that's super interesting. So the next episode is actually one of my favorite episodes. Yeah. It is uh, Denise's birthday. And this is the Kristen Chenoweth episode. Uh, this is starts off really funny because Kristen Chenoweth is the only female guest we see that Miss Piggy has no beef with. Her. Right. She and Kristen Chenoweth are... Uh, just buddies. Mm-hmm. They're super funny to each other, and they they just seem to get along really well. Denise is a wicked fangirl. Mm-hmm. She comes up to Kristen Chenoweth and just keeps gushing and gushing and gushing. Yeah. And uh, Denise is like, I'm your number one fan. And Uncle Deadly goes, mm, I believe I own number one Kristen Chenoweth fan.com. <laughs> and Denise is like, I'm so sorry, I'll leave. And then comes up and just babbles at Kristen Chenna with some more. Mm-hmm. And she's awkward. And she finally goes away. And Kristen goes, she's really sweet. Piggy, you're super graceful in that situation. Mm-hmm. Like, considering that's your ex's new girlfriend. Piggy, you're so graceful. And then Piggy goes, I'm good with kids. Yeah. Which is oh, a good, great like... Great line. It's a really great line. And the B plot here is... Kristen goes to Zoot's uncle's birthday party. Yes. To perform. Yeah, because the Electric Mayhem talk her into performing with them. So they end up in a van just driving across the desert to this party. Yeah. And it doesn't... And Kristen Chenna with... uh, Without meaning to, so is a lot of discord. Yeah. In the group. Like, she asks uh, Floyd Pepper and Janice about their relationship. Mm -hmm. Which they don't use titles. Yeah. And then that causes kind of a rift because it turns out it's Janice's decision not to make the relationship official, mm-hmm. uh, which is funny because that kind of plays into her, like, Sam's crush on her. Sam mm-hmm. wouldn't like who Janice really is. Yeah. Sam likes his idea of Janice. Um, and so Kermit needs to find, Kermit's crap at buying gifts. Kermit's mm-hmm. like the typical clueless boyfriend who doesn't know what to get his girlfriend for her mm-hmm. birthday. And the best person at buying gifts in the world is Miss Piggy. Yes. 
Miss Piggy can figure somebody out and get them something that's just perfect for them. Mm -hmm. And we also establish that Kermit and Piggy's song was You Are the Sunshine of My Life. Yes. Which does come into play later. Yeah. But it comes into play in this episode first. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Miss Piggy, in the nick of time at Denise's birthday lunch, Mm -hmm. has a music box custom made with a dancing pig in the colors of um in the colors of Denise's state flower. Yes. And also something with ketchup, because she always smells like ketchup. Yeah, like she loves ketchup, so there's like a supply of ketchup in it. Mm-hmm. And she is stunned at the thoughtfulness of the gift. And then when she opens it, it plays You Are the Sunshine of My Life. Yeah. And you want Kermit die inside. And then we cut away to Piggy and she goes, never ask your ex to buy your new girlfriend a present. Yeah. And one of the few times where I'm like, Piggy's right. What what an amazing payoff this is. Yeah. It's a great. Yeah. It's a really good episode. And I really enjoyed this episode. Yeah, it's well structured. Just amazing. Anyway, Electric Mayhem gets sick with Kristen Genoas and leave her in the middle of the desert to die. <laughs> yeah, and we never see Kristen Genoas again, see, so. Like, we get a shot of her trying to walk home in the middle of nowhere, like in heels. Uh, this is also the first episode where Scooter mentions Ken. So I know you wanted to yes. mention Ken. Uh, Scooter lives with his mom. Yes. But uh, hates... Her boyfriend, Her boyfriend, Ken. Ken. I don't think she's, he says boyfriend. I think it's his mom's friend, Ken. Like, yeah. I think he's oblivious to the fact that they're dating. Yes. He's like, he walks around naked sometimes. Get a robe, Ken. <laughs> to the point where we around the house have now started to say, get a robe, Ken. <laughs> um, so, episode 107, Pigs in a Black Cat. Yes. Um, this is the episode where... Kermit is so stressed out that Piggy tells him he has to take a week off. Yeah, he actually takes a mental health day, which is, like, great to see in fiction. Yeah. Someone taking a mental health break. But he's bad at it. Yeah, he doesn't know how to relax, so he ends up going to... A yoga retreat. Yeah, yoga retreat. This made me laugh because my mom goes to Kripalu every couple years on this yoga retreat, and a lot of this is what happens at Kripalu. Mm-hmm. And what happens to Kermit is a lot of what happens to my mom at Kripalu. If I may, for breakfast you'll be having a blueberry. Home! <gasps> Before you eat the blueberry, oh. appreciate it. Oh. Be in the moment with the blueberry. Look at the blueberry. Look at it. Feel it in your fingers. Oh. Now eat the blueberry. And uh, Kripalu has something called silent breakfast. <laughs> Uh, where you, you're not allowed to talk during mm. breakfast. And my mother is not unlike me, a chatterbox. Yes. Silent breakfast is literal torture <laughs> for my mother. So watching Kermit similarly struggle, like Kermit smuggles his cell phone. And then he and Jason Bateman. Yeah, because Jason Bateman's there. Uh, end up talking a lot of business. They, they're they each other's yoga partner. Yeah. And they start like quietly trying to do business with each other. Mm-hmm. And then Jason Bateman sells out Kermit. Yeah, and gets him thrown out of the yoga retreat. Because he's going to get in trouble. And he goes, mm. no, no, no. If I'm home before Monday, my wife will kill me. <laughs> Which is a great bit. Uh, but while he's away, Sco- Scooter runs the show. Scooter runs the show. And uh, they establish that... Kermit likes a certain temperature because he's an amphibian. Yes. Which is a great biology joke. Yeah, so it's always too hot in the studio. Yeah. So he turns on the air conditioning, and in that one moment of Scooter messing with the thermostat, the whole show goes to hell. Because it sur- there's a power surge, Yeah, and they lost... A guest they were supposed to have, so they were going to have a butter sculpture competition. Yeah. And so this giant... 300 pound cube of butter starts to melt. Yes. And all the lights start exploding. And we get this great moment of Janice dancing in the sparks, going, I'm a fire goddess. <laughs> and Sam going, Me too. And then like trying to dance <laughs> in it, which is like a great moment where he, we established him trying to fit in with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So there's like fried electric. It's this like Rube Goldbergian everything going wrong. Yeah. And the, eventually the lights go out and Scooter's just like, I broke it. I broke Kermit's show. And he just tries to run away. And then he talks to Gonzo. And together they kind of come up with the idea of running the show by candlelight mm-hmm. and using the generators only on the cameras. Yes. And so they do this like intimate crazy show with the pentatonics because they wouldn't need a band. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was 2015, so the pentatonics have to show up. Yeah, so they were there. Uh, so they actually managed to pull off a really beautiful show. Yes. And Scooter learns the value of listening to other people and collaborating well. Yes. So this is the first one that has like an ASAP. Yeah. So next episode, we're, I want to get through at least one more episode before this is episode we- episode eight? Yes. All right, so yeah, we can, we will probably break after this one. Uh, because this is a longer season. Mm-hmm. So, uh, this is a really Scooter-centric episode. Uh, This is the Chelsea Handler episode. Yes! Scooter finally... uh, Scooter books the talent for the show, and he finally books Chelsea Handler. Yes. On whom he has a huge crush. Yeah, which is... I don't know why. Just because, like, every single female guest star has been a attractive blonde woman Yeah, at this point. (laughs) Well, he's attracted to her personality because he talks about watching her show and how, oh, like... Oh, yeah, he says, she says dirty words. Yes. And so he's taken with her and Miss Piggy talks about... Well, I, I, I believe this is where Scooter says something like, "This she uses words that I've only heard Ken use when he's in bed with me and Mom. Cut your toenails, Ken! Yeah, oh my God, oh. <laughs> like the images that... Scooter can paint <laughs> are amazing. Oh my god, I I think I burned that line from my memory. <laughs> but Miss Piggy kind of leads Chelsea Handler to talk about her love life. Mm-hmm. And Chelsea talks about how she just wants like a nice dweeby guy. Yeah. Which I get. Uh, mm-hmm. Hey. Hi. Um, what do you mean? That she likes nice dweeby men. Yeah. And. You get that? I, I do. Weird. <laughs> and then. So in her dressing room, Scooter, like, says hi to her and kind of asks her out. And by that, I mean, implies he'd be amenable until Chelsea Handler asks him out. Right. So, you know, they go on a date and it's going really well. Mm -hmm. And then Chelsea leans in to kiss him. And he panics. He's like, too much. And it's this kind of great thing of, like, he was in love with the idea of Chelsea Handler. Mm Mm-hmm. But she's willing to, she's an adult in an adult relationship. She doesn't do anything really crass or anything. Yeah. She kisses a dude in the first date. Mm-hmm. So she goes, okay, I guess I'll go back to my high school moves. And he's like, you might want to go back to your junior high moves. <laughs> but she's going to tour. So she and Scooter agree to try things long distance for a while. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's the end of their little relationship. And it's cute. Well, I think she, there's a moment where she kind of says something crass on the phone. And yeah. Scooter's like, too much! And no one can believe it. Everyone's yeah. like, Scooter scored Chelsea Handler. What mm. the hell? Uh, meanwhile, uh, Kermit isn't sure how he feels about Becky, Fozzie's girlfriend. So Denise is like, let's do a double date with them. Yeah. So they go play Quizzo. And uh, Kermit... Goes under the table to find Becky on on her her phone. phone During Quizzo. The greatest sin imaginable. And he super overreacts. Mm -hmm. And... This this is also because Fozzie's planning to move in with her. Yes. And they haven't been together for very long. Right. And it turns out Becky was trying to snipe an eBay auction... For a gift for Fozzie. A very thoughtful gift. Yeah, like one of those perfect, like, I want, I can't remember what it is, though. It's a jewelry box that plays You Are the Sunshine <laughs> of My Life, I believe. I don't remember what it actually is. Um, I, for some reason, it's not in my notes. I, I don't remember what it is either. But it's a super, super thoughtful gift. Like, the kind of thing you have to buy for your partner off eBay because it's something that's not produced anymore. Right. So she, like, admits to having been on her phone. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Denise is telling Kermit not to get involved. Yeah, and Kermit will not listen. And so then 
Becky's very upset now because Kermit has forced her to out her gift to mm-hmm. Fozzie. So she shows Fozzie what it is and Fozzie is so touched. Yeah. Because it is a incredibly thoughtful gift. So it turns out Becky's a wonderful person. Mm-hmm. And Kermit kind of has egg on his face. Yes. All right. So that's the first half of Muppets. I think this has got to be a two-parter. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, I think we missed something. One quick thing I want to bring up. Yeah. Uh, I think we missed Lawrence Fishburne. We did. That was in the Christina Applegate episode. Yeah. Kermit's driving around in a golf cart and crashes into Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. Oh, 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 my goodness. Watch where you're going, frog. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, Lawrence. Uh, uh. Hey, hey, when are you going to come do the show? Well, if it keeps on sucking the way it did last night, never! And he drives away. And then, like, later on, he comes back and he's like, Hey, Kermit. Yeah? I just want to say I'm sorry about what I said about your show sucking. Yeah? I just had a really rough night. Oh, I'm sorry. What happened? I watched your show and it sucked! (laughs) And he drives away. And that's the (laughs) end of Lawrence Fishburne in the show. Oh, God. That's so funny. It's the little things like that that are just, like, so perfect. Absolutely. This show does utilize guests super well. Yeah, and I'm also, I think I've said this before, one of my favorite things in the world is actors playing themselves. And that's all we have here. And it's so fun. Other than Ricky Lindholm. Yeah. Uh, Who is hardly a household name. Yes. And certainly was not then. Yes. Uh, like, the the comedy in this is You so know, Garfunkel slick. and Oates only ran one season. Oh, it's probably going to happen soon. very soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the show is, like, super slick. Uh, the characters are not, w- like... The characters have grown. Yes. Like, we, we see the characters in different situations and being different people. Yeah, they've matured. Yeah. Uh, so, coming up. Yes. Uh, we, I, because we are going to break here. But, mm-hmm. like, you know, right now we're, I love this show. Yes. Uh, there's, I think, two more episodes before they take a hiatus. Correct. And when we get to that hiatus, we're going to be talking about how the show changes. Correct. And uh, how that affects the show and what's going on uh, behind the scenes. Not, like, actually behind the scenes. Not just, like, with Kermit. Yes. Uh, Any uh, bits of research or anything we need to discuss at this point? Not at the moment. All right. Well, then I just want to say this. Uh, Muppets will be our uh, last show before we take our yearly hiatus. Yes, this is our season two finale. So we will be taking a break through September. Uh, There will be content on this channel uh, uploading normally. It just won't be Stay Doomed. Correct. Uh, It'll be something else, but there will still be content here. So please be sure to come back. But we wanted to take some time off uh, for two major reasons. Three, if you want to count mental health. Uh, But... uh, we want to do the Patreon, so we should be launching a Patreon come October. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're working out all the logistics and things like that. So if you want to support the show, we're going to give you a way to do so. Yeah. And uh, to September 15th uh, on Twitch, we're going to be starting to do a game show. We are, yeah. So And that's on Tuesdays. That's going to be on so Tuesdays. So you'll get your plus two comedy fix. Yeah, so uh, be sure to join us. That's plus the number two comedy on Twitch for Conquest. A plus two comedy game show. Yeah. It's something we wanted to do or something that we used to do at conventions and there hasn't been conventions for a long, long time. Yes. So uh, I have a need to shout trivia into a microphone. Yep. So we will be doing Conquest very soon. So be sure to join us on Twitch. And I'm not getting enough of being pedantic and correcting people from this. Yes. So, so it's going to be more. great. So be sure to check us out for that. Uh, and also be sure to join us next week for more Muppets as uh, we finish out this season. Yeah. Where can people find us? You can email us at the Stay Doomed Show at gmail.com or on Facebook and Twitter at Stay Doomed. And if you want Ken to wear a robe, I'm at Plus Two Comedy. If Uncle Deadly is your favorite Muppet, I'm at Stay Doomed. Until next time, stay doomed. <laughs>